Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow, and today you might have guessed by what you're seeing or of course the title or thumbnail, we're talking switch axes. I've been putting some time into this weapon as I've been interested in it in Sunbreak. And of course that means I need to work out what is a good weapon or weapons in this case. Yes, once again, this is another weapon that benefits greatly from the really ridiculous effect of element damage in Sunbreak. Switch Axe is a brilliant example of this because it's got good raw but also great element numbers. And then you have the vials on top which are of course best shown in the element vials. This leads to some crazy good damage especially when you're considered you're amped up and you're doing those double hits constantly. However just like any element build that means you're going to need five different weapons for each of the five major elements. Fortunately we put together a build that will suit all five and we're going to talk about those five weapons you're going to want to pick in this video. As always, we'll be explaining the math as to how we came to this conclusion, but otherwise, welcome back to Rage Gaming, let's get started. Now before we get into the weapons, the math and all of that, I want to quickly acknowledge the new switch skill, Two Staged Morph Slash. The reason I bring this up is because morphing is ridiculous in this expansion, the damage output is great. So your new like optimal output when on the ground is the two hit combo of the sword into the morph of the axe, straight back into the sword, and then you do the double hit and then we just repeat this forever. Meanwhile using that new switch skill we can get our charge up and become amped much more effectively by using wild swings and then immediately going into your morph and then morphing back into your axe you can see it fills up a little bit over half your gauge in one combo. So you get amped and then you begin the combo which is once again going into sword double slashing and then morphing into axe back into sword and then double slashing and as you can see the output potential with this is crazy. So with that said let's talk about the skills. The core skill you're going to care about the most important one is rapid morph which increases the switch speed and power for your switch axes literally making you swap faster and also increasing the damage of your morph attacks by 20 percent which is obviously vital as this is our main combo. The other skill that's tied to your switch axe is of course power prolonger which means we're going to be powered up longer and then we get that amp double hit more often through our attacks. This is more of an actual comfy skill as long as you have level one of this you can really get by but it is very nice to have level three of this now let's look at the overall skills here we have fire attack five out of five so that's your element attack we will swap this to whatever element we're using so if we're using a water switch axe we'll have water attack five out of five weakness exploit is also vital it means we do more damage and are the basis of the affinity we have for this build while attacking the weakest points chain crit three out of three is also great this means plus 15 raw after a few hits and plus 15 element which is what we're using so this is wonderful. Attack boost is a really important skill to us. We need that at 4 out of 7 because once you hit level 4 you start getting the percent increase and the bonuses. Now I've acknowledged all the super important skills I need to reference the handicraft, the protective polish and also wirebug whisperer at level 1 which is really important. If you take a look at the sharpness of my switch axe in question you can see that I have just barely purple sharpness. Purple sharpness is a 39% increase to your raw and 25% for your element which is vital. So just barely reaching purple using hand Handicraft is required at times. And then that protective polish, well that means after we sharpen we have 90 seconds where we're not losing sharpness, therefore we're stuck in purple sharpness for all that, that's really important. Lastly that one level of wirebug whisperer means we have an extended duration on a third wirebug by 30%. This is just so good for everyone, all builds in the game, but really important if you're using the counter of switch axe, which you will be, because that costs two wirebugs, you're going to want this extra wirebug at all times. I should also mention that there is a clear lack of focus focus of crit and crit boost in this build because this weapon doesn't really benefit from those things nearly as much as other weapons. For example our vial damage which is of course a big part of our DPS with this weapon that can't crit or like zero sum discharge the big explosion at the end of that that can't crit either. So basically with switch X we just get more value from other things so that's why crit really isn't a thing here. But just to put them on screen again these are all of the skills that we have in this set and my reasoning and sort of priority between them for you guys. Let's explain the equipment we're wearing and why then. We have the Almadron helmet which gives us two rapid morph and some power prolonger. Then we have the final boss's chest piece giving us uh, weakness exploit one, resentment one which is just a random skill and then chain crit one. Then we have the Malzanero gloves. This gives us wirebug whisperer one which we certainly want. Attack boost two which is great and then a bit of blight resistance randomly. For the belt we have the final boss's belt. That's more weakness exploit 
by level one, and then the other two chain crit we need. Lastly, for the boots, light resistance two randomly, weakness exploit one, and attack boost one. Now, when it comes to the talisman, what we've done is we've picked a talisman that has two two slots in it. So it's a two two zero talisman. This is the baseline of the recommendations for all builds we're gonna give you because this is a really easy and reliable talisman to get and not much time melding. In this talisman's case, it came with one defense boost and one speed eating, but you can get much better skills on a talisman like that. For example, we could get power prolonger, we could get rapid morph, or we could even get two protective polish, which is what I run uh, in my set. Having better skills means you can rework your decorations a bit and maybe get a bit more value or even more levels on your skills. But as a baseline, a 220 talisman is what we're recommending. Now inside that gear, we have our handicraft jewel. We've got three of these because our weapon in this case requires three handicraft to reach purple sharpness, which is required. And to go with that, that means we're going to need three protective polish decorations, sharp jewel two, to reach 90 seconds of no sharpness loss after sharpening. That allows us to just barely maintain purple sharpness for 90 seconds, and then we need to sharpen again to maintain it. In the helmet, we have an attack jewel. That gives us four out of four attack. There's our second handicraft and a quick switch jewel to get us to three out of three rapid morph. In the gloves, we have that last handicraft we need. In the waist, we have the enhancer decoration. This is really nice to have three out of three power prolonger. And in the boots, we're getting all of our element attack. So this is the fire build, so the fire weapon. So we have hard blaze three, and then we have the remaining two here. Lastly, for the rampage decoration, I would always recommend element exploit if you can fit it, if you have a three slot. You might be wondering about the switcher decoration, which is a special effect on your vowels during morph attacks. Sounds great, right? But apparently it only really works in power files. And even then, it doesn't really compete with running just anti-aerial, anti-aquatic, anti-dragon, anti-fanged, whatever it is. It's just more consistent damage improvements. So try to look for Ellen Bane if you can, or look for the anti-specific for your monster you're hunting. Now it's finally time to talk about the weapons. Starting with the one that I'm holding, you're seeing in this footage, the Volcanic Switch, which is the Magma Drum uh, Switch Axe. It has attack 320, just barely reaches purple sharpness like we require using Handicraft. And then we have Element of Fire 78, which is really high. It doesn't have any affinity, sadly, but it does have a three slot for decoration slots, which is really important. And then the rampage slot at three as well, which is brilliant. Most importantly, though, it is an element vial type, which is the best option we can get. Now I'm going to explain all five of the weapons and why, but I'm going to do some math quickly to showcase you how we worked out which were the best weapons so that you can understand it. So to work out the value of a weapon, you're going to need to take a look at some things. Its attack, what sharpness it has, how much element it has in this case, what what affinity it has, and the value of, say, its default slots and its rampage slots. These all affect the ultimate number at the end, and of course, the bigger number, the better. So for the raw damage, you're going to need to work out the attack and then times that by the sharpness, and then that number is times by the affinity the weapon has. Meanwhile, for element, it's just element times sharpness. Purple sharpness increases your raw attack by 39%, and then your element by 25%. It's the most you can increase it by, so you need it. Now let's do the math. So we have the attack of this weapon, which is 320, and then we have the sharpness, which is, of course, purple. So it's 320 attack to start with, and that's times by 39%, so 1.39. That brings us to 444.8. Then we have one decoration slot on the weapon, which is a three slot. How we work this out is we have it so a two slot decoration is equal 2% value. If you were to put, say, an attack decoration in there or a crit eye at certain values, that's going to literally increase your damage by 2%. So that's the fairest way we can work this out. So 444.8, we need to increase that by 2%, so we times it by 1.02. Two, that brings us to 453.696. We're going to round that up to 454 then. Now, as the weapon has no affinity, we don't need to do any calculations from that. We do need to do the element. So element times sharpness, that's 78 element times 1.25 or 25%. And that brings us to 97.5. So once again, we'll round up making it 98. So the volcanic switch here has 454 raw in value and 98 element in value. That makes it the highest and best fire element. Second place went to Rathalos if you're interested. Okay, so let's finally talk about the five weapons. Weapons. We've begun with the Magmadron. This is our fire weapon of choice, as I've just explained and shown you the math of. This requires three handicraft to reach purple sharpness, though. So, of course, that's required, like I just showed you. For your water switch next, then, it's going to be the Almadron. It's pretty satisfying to run these two together since, you know, they look so similar. But it also makes for the best water weapon by far. With 320 attack, purple sharpness when you have three handicraft, which we require. 74 water, no affinity. A nice 2-1 for its decoration slots. And then a three rampage slot and again 
element vial, which is awesome. So yes, much like the Magmadron build, you will need three handicraft, but it's well worth it to run this weapon. For your Thunder Switch Axe, we're running the Nawa Switch Axe for a bunch of reasons. It has 310 attack to begin with. It does actually reach purple sharpness with handicraft, but it only needs one handicraft, which makes up for the slots we'll talk about in a sec. It comes with 74 Thunder and a two slot for the Rampage Vial. Once again, it's an element vial, so awesome. So in this case, with this weapon, you will need only one handicraft, which makes up for the fact that you don't actually have a three slot in this weapon. It'll be a net gain of one decoration slot to work with that you're no longer needing to use on a handicraft. Now you might be wondering about the Zinogre option for Thunder, and it is a viable option. The downside is it's a power vial, so slightly worse, but it does come with better decoration slots and more purple sharpness, so you actually don't need any handicraft for this. So if you prefer this weapon as a comfier but slightly weaker Thunder option, go for it. For our ice element then, you're going to want to run the Crescella de Oro weapon. This is awesome because it doesn't actually require any handicraft, so you're going to have two slots to make use of and get some extra levels and skills. Unfortunately, with the ice options, they're both power vials, but this weapon has the three rampage slot in it, so we can run Elm Bane, which is great. Of course, your other ice option would be the Lunar Garon switch axe, which looks awesome. It has higher attack, but lower element, also a power vial, and a smaller rampage slot decoration. They're very comparable, though, so if you prefer the look of this, you can use it even though it's slightly worse. Last but not least then, we're definitely going to need a Dragon Switch Axe. So we're looking here at the Calamitous Axe. This is the Death Stench Tree, which is quite interesting. This thing's ridiculous. 330 attack, you got your Purple Sharpness with Handicraft 3, 60 Dragon Element, and then it has two two slots for its decorations. That's so good. Let alone the three slot for Rampage slot, even better. And yes, it's also Element Vile. So this thing is absolutely ridiculous. A clear top pick for Dragon, and interestingly, the one I keep seeing speedrunners use. Clearly, for good reason. Now then, we should really do the math to show you how the armor set, the skills, actually work with the weapon to bring it to a very respectable number. We'll be using, once again, the Volcanic Switch, the Magmadron Switch Axe, and we'll be enhancing that with the armor skills that we have. It has 320 weapon attack to begin with, but we have four attacks, so that's plus seven. And then we also have train, Chain Crit, so when you attack a few times in a row, you're going to get plus 15. This brings us to 300. 42 attack. Then attack 4 also gives us 5% attack. So let's give that 5% to the 342. So 342 times 1.05. That brings us to 359. Now we're only getting our affinity from weakness exploit when we're attacking a weak spot. So that's 50% affinity with no boost on it, meaning that's plus 25% damage, half of the attacks that we do. Therefore, 359 times 1.125. That brings us to 404. Then lastly, we have our purple sharpness for our attack. That's a 39% increase as we've talked about. So 404 times 1.39. That's 562 base raw attack. Of course, that's not taking into account our vials or say like the enhancements of a rampage decoration. But of course, that's not the only aspect of this weapon. We also have the element damage, which once again begins at 78. Now we're getting plus four element from element five, in this case, fire attack five. And we're also getting another 15 element from chain crit three, just like the attack. So that brings us to 97 element right away. Now having element attack five also gives you 20% extra element damage. So that's 97 times 1.2. That brings us up to 116. Then again, we have the purple sharpness. So that's 25% increase. So 116 times 1.25, that's 146 as your element. So the set combined with the Magmadron Fire Switch X, that's 562 attack and 146 element. That's really high element. Combined with your element vials, amped up and doing those multiple hits, you're racking up crazy DPS with this set. And the thing is, with a few of these weapons, as I said, you're going to get one or even two free decoration slots because you won't need as much handicraft. So you can slot in some extra damage. Maybe get level three Wirebug Whisperer or get some extra attack. And these numbers could be even higher. So in conclusion, I think a surprise to nobody, Switch X is doing really well in Sunbreak thanks to the serious power of element damage. Once again, this is the downside of having to make five different builds to work with five different weapons. But we've created a universal set that should should only need these minor differences with, say, needing less or more handicraft to make it all work. The most important thing is to make sure that no matter what you're running, you have purple sharpness and you're always attacking with it using protective polish.
Plus, it's always fun to use a nice variety of weapons and even think about like what you're about to go against and what its weaknesses are. It feels like being an actual hunter. As always, a big thank you to Josh slash Rage for helping with the math. We had some back and forth on how to make the best set for all of these five different weapons. But without him, this video wouldn't exist. The math wouldn't exist. The armor set wouldn't exist. So full credit to him. For now though, I hope this video has helped you. If it has, please do drop a like. These videos take a lot of work, so it'll be really appreciated. If you have anything to input for the builds, then please drop it in the comments. But until next next time i've been hollow you've been you and thank you again for watching josh cotton and hollow with the videos dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment yes i said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye